many serious problems with the gap theory. This house, for instance, is unformed and unfilled. Nobody's living in it. But it doesn't mean it's been destroyed. It's just simply not done yet. Now, there is a verse in Jeremiah where it uses the phrase without form and void, and in this case, it is talking about a city that's been destroyed. You can read the passage for yourself. In Jeremiah 4, it talks about the mountains, had, they trembled, the hills moved, there was no man, the birds had fled. Obviously, this Jeremiah passage is not talking about the creation, because the birds weren't made later till day five. This Jeremiah passage is talking about a city that was destroyed or judged by God. This house is also unformed and unfilled. And in this case, it has been destroyed. But the Genesis 1 passage is not talking about a pre-Adamite civilization. We know from Exodus 20, verse 11, part of the Ten Commandments, God said, In six days he made, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. What do you suppose he meant by that? It looks to me like he's trying to tell us he made it all in six days. I'm not sure how you could say it any plainer than that. This would include Lucifer. This would include the angels. This would include everything. If he made everything in six days, then you can't say Lucifer fell from heaven before the creation because he wasn't made yet. Everything was made in six days. And it said God rested on the seventh day. If there was a gap between verse 1 and verse 2, this is not the seventh day. This is the X number, you know, gazillionth day, whatever it was. But in Exodus 31, God said, It's a sign between me and the children of Israel forever, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day He rested. Once again, we have an example where it's the seventh day. You look at Genesis 2, 2. On the seventh day, God rested. Genesis 2, 3. It was God blessed the seventh day. Hebrews 4, it was the seventh day. The Bible's real clear on this, folks. I don't think the gap theory is feasible, not possible. It's not scriptural. The Bible tells us, Romans 5, in Romans 5, that death came by sin. The Bible says, death reigned from Adam to Moses. The Bible says, by man came death, in Adam all die. If the gap theory is true, you have death before sin. You have a serious theological problem, I think a heresy. The Bible says, death is an enemy. Some people say, well, didn't plants die before Adam sinned? Oh, you better first decide what life is. Plants wither, they fade, but plants are not alive in the biblical sense. We cover lots more on that on video number seven, question and answer time. Gap theory folks will say, well, hey, didn't God tell Adam to replenish the earth? Oh, he sure did. And they say, see, look up the word replenish. It means fill again. Well, now, wait, 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 wait. You're taking a 1611 Bible and looking up a word in a 21st century dictionary. Why don't you look it up in a 1611 dictionary and see what they meant back then? Mm -hmm. The word replenish simply meant fill. Even today there are two definitions in your dictionary, fill and refill. If I say, would you please replenish my water supply, of course that means would you fill it again. That's what the word, we use, we use that word today to mean fill again. The Hebrew word uh, male means fill, and the other Hebrew word mean filling again is not the one found there in Genesis chapter 1. See, in 1611, the word replenish simply meant fill. That was a common English word to go, you know, go fill something, go replenish it. Even if it's brand new, never been filled before, you still replenish it. About 1650, they started using the word to mean fill again. English words change meanings quite frequently. When I was a kid, the word cool meant not hot, and gay meant happy. Those words have changed meanings, folks. How would you interpret uh, James 2, 3? You have respect unto him that weareth the gay clothing, would you agree you would probably need to have a 1611 dictionary to get the right definition of what they meant back then? Mm -hmm. Instead of a 21st century dictionary, of course you would. Paul said in Romans, I would have come to you, but I was let hitherto. The word let used to mean hindered. Today it means exactly the opposite. It means allowed. See, God promised to preserve His Word. He did not promise to preserve our English language. If our language goes corrupt, oh well, His Word is settled forever in heaven. In Ezekiel 28, it tells us, talking about Lucifer, <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord, Thou sealest up the psalm, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. And then it describes him for a while. And it says, In the day that thou wast created, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. He said, Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. Well, here from Ezekiel 28, we know that Lucifer was created, 
And we know he was perfect until iniquity was found in him. And we know he was in Eden until iniquity was found in him. Well, if Lucifer was perfect and he was in Eden, and Eden wasn't made till day six, then it's not logical to say Lucifer fell before the creation. Because the Garden of Eden hadn't been made yet. Plus, we know from Job 38, all the sons of God, which in every verse I'm aware of refers to angels, which would include Lucifer, all of them shouted for joy when the foundations of the earth were laid. This means all of the created beings were excited when God laid the foundations of the earth. So the question is, when was that? Well, the best verse I can find to tell about when the foundations of the earth were laid is Genesis 1, verse 9 through 13. God said, let the waters of heaven, under heaven be gathered together and let the dry land appear. I think the foundations were laid on the third day, which means the angels must have been made on the first or second day. We know the angels were made, and we know everything was made in six days, so that's the only way it fits as far as I can see. Angels must have been made on day one or day two, the Bible doesn't tell us, <clears throat> and then they were excited when God laid the foundations of the earth on day three. No conflict whatsoever. At the end of chapter one, God saw everything that he made, and it was very good. If Lucifer had fallen from heaven, it would not be very good if the devil's running around as a bad guy. That'd be a lie for God to say that. He said everything was very good. Some people say, well, aren't the words created and made different? Well, I don't think so. <clears throat> I went through the scriptures and found every place where those words are used. I've got a whole list of them. If you want me to send that to you by email or fax or something. God said, let us make man in our image. So God created man in his own image. The words are used interchangeably all through scripture. I can show you where trees are created and where trees are made, where animals are created, where animals are made, where man is created, man is made. Just back and forth all through Scripture. More on video number seven about that. We give the list. The gap theory folks will say, well, the first earth was destroyed and God had to remake the earth. John Hagee, television evangelist, has a huge, beautiful chart about the first earth, the second earth, and the third earth. And he said the first earth was destroyed, you know, when Satan fell from heaven, and then God made the second earth for Adam to live on. Well, it's a beautiful chart, and it preaches good, but it's not true. When you compare it to Scripture, Revelation says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. You know, we're still standing on the first earth. It got rearranged at the flood quite a bit, but hey, this is still the first one, folks. So that business about the first earth being destroyed is simply not scriptural. Here's the logic that you can follow on this. We know... Everything was created in six days, according to Exodus 20. We know Satan was created, according to Ezekiel 28. We know Satan was in Eden until he sinned, Ezekiel 28, 14. We know Eden was made on day six, Genesis 2, 8. Angels are created to be ministering spirits for us, Hebrews 1. So why would God create them millions of years before man? The purpose of the angels is to be ministering spirits for us. That's what God told us. Satan rejoiced when the foundations of the earth were laid, Job 38. The foundations of the earth were laid on day three, Genesis 1. Everything was very good at the end of day six. I don't see any way Satan could have fallen from heaven until a long time after the creation. The next clue we have, the Bible says Adam was 130 when Seth was born. Now Cain and Abel were born before that, but we don't have any dates for those guys. So Adam and Eve could have been in the garden for a hundred years before they sinned. I think they were in there probably a hundred years. Satan got jealous of the fellowship they were having with God. These people are praising God, and Satan thought, you know, they ought to be praising me. The Bible says in Ezekiel 28 that he was full of pride because of his power, because of his beauty, and because of his wisdom, and because of his riches. Those things always cause pride. We cover that on the seminar about Leviathan, the fire-breathing dragon. So Lucifer probably fell about a hundred years after the creation, went down, tempted Eve, she fell, temp she told Adam, here, eat this. He said, honey, you're in trouble. Man, you blew it. But he voluntarily, knowingly, willingly became sin to save his wife. Read First Peter, First Timothy tells us about that. Adam was not deceived. Eve was deceived. Adam knew full well what he was doing, just like Christ knew full well what he was doing when he took our sins upon him on the cross. It's a good type of what Jesus did for us on the cross. The gap theory was invented in 1814 by a Scottish preacher named Chalmers. It is not the obvious teaching of the scripture. Um, it violates numerous scriptures. It violates Hebrews chapter 1. It violates Exodus chapter 20. It puts death before Adam's sin. It has Satan fall before day seven. It has lots of problems, folks. 